are we about to see $45 silver? Is there a big warning? I need to give you something that's going to happen this week, maybe tomorrow, that could have major impact on the silver price and the gold price. But let's go back to $45 silver. That sounds a lot more appetizing now, doesn't it? How is that going to happen? I'm going to show you one of the reasons with a chart here in just a few seconds. And then we're going to talk about the other reasons. The fact that the synthetic fiat make-believe unicorn fart dust world out there holds nothing when we compare it to silver. But let's jump into the charts right away. One of our viewers, Kelton, has been very gracious in sharing these charts with me. Now, we talk about this all the time, guys, the wedgie, right? Do you see, do you see when you look at this screen and you see what's going on in the silver price? Now, this goes back to 2021. You see this line? I don't know if you can see my cursor. Hopefully you can. But there's a triangle that's a wedge. Do you see how when you go from left to right, the price of silver is being compressed into a wedge? It's like the cup and handle. It's a very predictable, very much followed chart pattern in silver. And right now, as we sit kind of in this 2450 range, and we're going to go check the silver price here in a second, we have the potential once it breaks out above that top line, guys, then it is go time. What could happen, and this is very exciting, is that it could actually, actually, and let's go over here. This is even a longer view of the wedgie that's being formed in silver. But once we break out above that 25, 26 range, then the next thing that we're going to have to be watching is, yeah, remember the old cup and handle pattern? Because once silver does get to $45, $50 per ounce, well, then the cup and handle, so it's going to be a wedgie, cup and handle, double whammy that is going to propel the price of silver to $45. And then extra added bonus, we'll go from $45.50, guys, all the way up to $100, right? That's the cup and handle playing out. Now, again, this is not a uh, my opinion. I'm not giving financial advice, but a lot of the other smart people in the room are particularly looking at the cup and handle formation in silver. And beyond that, we know the fundamental reasons to love silver, okay? Hey, let's go check right now. I want to bring you out to, oh, hold on here. Sorry about that, guys. I want to go out to, let's go check on the silver and gold price. What do you say? Real quick, we'll go out to Pimbex. Oh, gold is up $3.63 as we record, and silver is up $0.08. Cents. All right, that is awesome. Okay. Let's talk about the big warning, warning, right? Tomorrow could be a crazy day in the precious metals markets. You know how they like to smash down the price of gold, smash down the price of the silver. Thank you, Sean R., for that super chat. Thank you. Super chats are always super appreciated, never super expected, but they're a nice, pleasant surprise, and they go a long way to help support the family. Nonetheless, you know. You guys, we've been through this before, and who knows if we're done, right? Are we at a point where the physical market for silver and gold are overwhelming the paper markets, or will they try another smashdown? Can you believe we're almost at $2,200 gold? Silver's performing well, right? $24.50. We can't complain, but what are we going to hear tomorrow? Let me read this to you. I'm sorry I have to be the bearer of potential scary news. In the week ahead, investors will face the final major test before the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell, March 20th. So that'll be like a week from Thursday, week from Wednesday, we'll hear from the Fed. That's not the scary news for tomorrow. The scary news for tomorrow is consumer price index, CPI, inflation numbers will come out on Tuesday and offer an updated look at inflation, okay? We also get retail sales and consumer sentiment reports, but that'll be the big market mover tomorrow. Who knows? Are we at a point, right, when the silver and gold market are saying enough is enough? Are they calling monkey on the Fed? It feels that way. Like people are 
uh, the Fed's losing a little bit of its sway. You know, they're kind of uh, not as influential uh, on the silver and gold price as maybe they were a year and a half, two years ago. I mean, we talk about this all the time, right? The Fed's become more of a PR firm. Is the market or our gold and silver in particular beginning to realize that the emperor has no clothes, that it's, you know, the man behind the curtain and that it's all somewhat of a facade, a mirage? We'll see, right? We don't know. We don't know for sure. But as the market and as the gold and silver market continue to wise up, right? Maybe all this, oh, well, inflation numbers were high. That would be the narrative tomorrow that would destroy silver and gold. If inflation numbers come out really high, then people will think, oh, the Fed's going to need to raise rates to fight inflation, blah, blah, blah. Well, I think the Fed's probably going to need to raise rates to fight inflation anyway. And what really matters to you, silver and gold investors, uh-oh, hold on a minute. Oh, is that my, hold on, Susie, Susie's texting me. Bear with me, guys. All right. Yo, that's Sean, my college roommate. <laughs> Thank you, Sean, for the super chat. My college roommates continue to support us. Um, as the market wise up, wises up more and more, the gold and silver market, right? The, 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 the Fed, the kind of make-believe numbers that they're putting out there, right? The Fed saying, oh, you know, everybody's waiting for the Fed to lower rates, right? That's going to be great for silver and gold. Well, guess what? They've not lowered rates yet, and silver and gold are doing really well. And the reality is, guys, the reality, here's the harsh truth that you need to understand, okay? The, the, the system, because of all the debt and everything going on, the system needs inflation. And they need inflation to be higher than interest rates. Thank you, Metal Seer, for that super chat. That's the fact of the matter. And once we get recognition, right, stagflation, stagnant economy with inflation, that inflation is going to be running higher than interest rates, that's negative real interest rates, and that is additional support, rocket fuel for the silver and gold price. We're going to get into more of that later, but let's talk about what's going on with our friends at Costco selling silver and gold. I'm going to bring up this article here because we're getting more and more uh, mainstream media. This is from CNN. Yes, the Children's News Network is running a headline story about uh, silver and gold at Costco. And they say something very, they really... They really put us down, guys. They really give us a, uh, hold on here. There we go. Okay, full screen. All right, sorry about that. As I stumble my way through with all this technology, here's the headline from CNN Business. Costco Wholesale. Why Costco is selling gold bars and silver coins. And they go through the whole litany, the whole list. There's one sentence in here that I found very interesting, okay? Uh, it says Costco is trying to replicate its recent success with gold bars. It began selling $2,000 gold bars online in September and sold more than $100 million worth of bars in one three-month period, one quarter, okay? Uh, then it says this. This is where they start putting us down. They, they're throwing some shade our way here. It's selling precious metals to try and reinforce its quote-unquote treasure hunt brand image where it peppers its stores with unexpected limited time items to keep shoppers coming back. Uh, but, but, this is, but let's go down here further, okay? Uh, there's somewhere in here that says something very interesting. One of these days I'll learn how to like have highlights in here. Hold on. Well, basically, I can't find it. <laughs> But at some point in this article, so that you don't have to uh, watch me uh, 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 suffer through this, it basically says that hardly any Americans own gold or silver. And darn it, where was it? Russia's doors, first time cover. Hold on. Some investors. Darn it. Well, anyway, guys, in there, in this article, it basically, at some point, there's a little blurb that says, Hardly any Americans own silver. It kind of made it, in the way they worded it, it kind of made it sound like, oh, you know, this is a fringe group of people and Costco's just having fun with them. Uh, but it, I don't think that's the case. I think it's a sign of times to come. Now, I was thinking, though, 
Like if people are buying gold, buying silver at Costco, if I were buying gold and silver, I'd want to buy it from a specialist. So I want to mention our channel sponsor, Pimbex. Okay. Pimbex is an online bullion dealer where you can order gold, silver, and platinum. Okay. And if you do your research on the company, what you'll find is that their prices are ultra competitive. Almost always the best when I'm out shopping around. Their selection is great and their service is second to none. Let's just run out real quickly. I want to show you something. Look at this. Stack to the sky. Gold coins and bars available. Fast shipping. And I can vouch for that. American Eagles, gold and silver coins available. Here it is right here, guys. Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, Pimbex.com. They can also help with IRA conversions. If you're ever considering moving part or all of an IRA into precious metals, do yourself a favor and talk to the guys at Pimbex. I think you'll find, and you need to find this out for yourself, that when you work with Pimbex, you get more metal for your money. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, here, CNN confirms, right, that if you hold any silver or gold in your house, you're a lone wolf. <laughs> you're fringe, basically. And I want to say this, right? Silver is timeless, not like fiat, not like stocks or any other synthetic investment. And we're, we talked about that at the beginning. How can silver get to $45 an ounce? Well, all this other stuff is synthetic. Stocks, right? Oh, heck, a lot of the stocks now, you, you get like a, a pennies on the dollar represented in real assets. Every dollar you may own in, let's say, Apple stock, maybe, right, when you do an analysis of their balance sheet and break it down to a per share basis, maybe you're getting three or four or 10, 15 cents for each dollar you have in there in real assets. Silver and gold are timeless. They can wait forever, okay? Uh, the stock market, even the real estate market for that matter, your house, anything, right? That can change day by day by day by day. Sure, the paper value of silver measured in dollars, measured in paper, measured in electronic dollars, measured in unicorn fart dust dollars, whatever you want to call it, right? It'll change. But the value of that silver is always, always there. Same thing with gold as well. Always, always there. All this other synthetic stuff is just that, synthetic, right? And remember Exter's Pyramid, everything above silver and gold. I call it synthetic, right? I get called out. People say, oh, well, you know, you're anti. No, I'm not anti anything. I'm pointing out what to me is a fact, right? Paper money, debt, derivatives, right? Even crypto to a certain, I mean, I guess it is it's synthetic, it's, you know, gold and silver are the base of that in real. I'm not turning this into a crypto debate, okay, or blockchain debate. That's great. I'm nothing against any of those things, but I will say that silver and gold are the base of everything. And when that synthetic stuff, right, when it starts to crumble, and remember, right, we are victims of normalcy bias, recency bias, just because in my 54 years on this planet, it's never happened, doesn't mean that things don't happen. Remember the great financial crisis of 2008? Remember the tech bubble when it burst? Remember long-term capital management? Many of you are as old as me and can remember that. Uh, remember the C-19 financial crisis, I guess you could call it, money printing crisis. <laughs> they printed 40% of the dollars that are in existence. These things happen. We can just look back 30 years in this country. But if we zoom out 3,000 years, we see they happen over and over and over, right? How many people do you know in this uh, silver and gold YouTube community that have piles and piles of all these different paper currencies that have failed over the years, right? Lynette Zhang, Ted from Ted Speaks, right? They all have these piles. It happens, guys. Right? And don't forget what Lynette Zhang said when she was here in the basement uh, doing an interview with me a couple months ago. I asked her, why does everything feel so crazy? She said, because it is crazy, because we're at the end of this process. Now, look, nobody knows for sure. Don't make any financial decisions based on what I'm saying. I'm just telling you how I see it. You need to determine how you see it, right? See what you see is best. U.S. debt is unsustainable. And at the same time, the world is moving away from the dollar. Think about that. We're talking big picture here. 
let's go out to the debt clock. We haven't been there for a while. Let's just make sure that the U.S. debt is not going down. Hold on one second. There we go. And... Oh, hey, congratulations, my fellow Americans. We now have $34,500,000. Right, yesterday, it wasn't even that high. Oh, look at that. We just added another 100000 about every four seconds. Yeah, okay, this situation is untenable, okay? Uh, and at the same time that our debt is skyrocketing, the world is moving away from the dollar. Why do you think bank, uh, central banks, world central banks, are buying gold at record amounts? Huh? But in the USA, what are we told? We're told, oh, the economy's great. Bidenomics, the economy's stronger than ever. The stock market's at all-time highs. Real, uh, residential real estate's at all-time highs, right? Recessions are always retroactively announced. There's a lot of people who are saying that right now we could be in a recession. Do you think we're in a recession? If you do, type R. Okay, R, not for Ron, for recession in the chat. Okay. Uh, and when you take a poll of Americans, this is what's interesting. The, the mainstream media is constantly telling us how great the economy is. But when you take a poll of average, are you an average American? I'm an average American. And when you take a poll of average Americans, their number one concern is economic, financial troubles. But at the same time, we're told, oh, the economy is doing great. Don't, you know, you, you should be happy. You should enjoy having four jobs, okay? And nobody wants to address the root of the problem, which is government spending way beyond our means. And now we're in a spiral. I mean, we've gotten to a point of almost no return here. And, and you know, they can't lower rates, right? Because who's going to buy our debt? Remember what we said earlier? Look at that debt number. Oh, there's another Another couple million, no big deal, right? Who's going to buy our debt, right? Who wants our debt? As our debt is exploding and we need countries to buy our debt, they don't want to buy the debt. You know what they want to buy? They want to buy real assets. They want to buy, well, they're, well if they don't want to, they are. They're buying gold, right, at levels that are greater than when the world was on uh, the gold standard. It's absolutely crazy what is going on, okay? The Fed can't. Hold on, I'm getting back. The Fed cannot fight inflation, right? They don't really want to fight inflation. It's a mirage uh, from what should be a bank, right? The Fed, the Fed should be a bank, but they're not. They've turned into a PR firm, okay? The only way the system lives longer is through inflation. The only way they can perpetuate the system that the powers that be are beholden to is through inflation. And it doesn't matter what rates are, as long as inflation is higher and gold and silver are likely sniffing that out right now. I just realized, I don't think you guys can see me. <laughs> you probably enjoy looking at the debt clock more than you do looking at my face, but nonetheless, I'm glad to see you. I'm so happy you're here. It's a big, big, big deal when you, yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay, Sean R., my college roommate, uh, you know, we got Jake from Jake's Custom Parts, everybody who you, okay, are the most important part. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the thumbs up. That helps get the word out to more people. I'm only going to beg you once to subscribe. It's free. All the content is free. And the super chats are super appreciated, okay? Uh, nobody wants to address the root of the problem. The government's spending way beyond our means. OK, I talked about that already. Debt to GDP. Remember the 70s? Do you remember the 70s? Many of you are probably old enough. I was born in 1970. I kind of remember the 70s. But when I read about what happened in the 70s, it's silver went up like, I don't know, 20 times in value. Gold skyrocketed in value. OK, we're in a very similar situation right now, but worse. Oh, that's the reality way worse on two fronts, geopolitically, meaning with the BRICS and the BRICS plus Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. The world is splitting. Back in the 70s, we were able to kind of do the, uh, uh, the petrodollar thing with the Saudi Arabians. Now, right now, that's all falling apart. That's just the facts. Look, I'm a full-blooded American. I don't like it. You don't have to like it, but that's what's going on right now. And at the same time, 
the debt level in this country is way beyond what it was in the 70s. Unless I have this wrong, the debt to GDP ratio in the 70s was like 25, 30%. Now we're above 100%. We, we, we could see, we could, again, no crystal ball, nothing, nothing like, I'm not, not giving financial advice, but guys, we could be in for like a decade of potential incredible moves in the silver and gold price. Could be, could be, right? I don't know. Right. I could be sitting down here a year from now saying I was wrong. Silver is $14 an ounce. I don't think that's going to happen. Right. But I'll take that bet. You know why? Because it's asymmetric. This is key to understand. Let's talk about that real quickly. Asymmetric means not equal. What does symmetric mean? Equal. Asymmetric, not equal. When you buy an ounce of silver today for $24.50, okay, your downside risk. I, I really will have a hard time seeing it go below twenty dollars per ounce. What you could sell it for with premium, you know, built in there. If it goes to eighteen an ounce, yeah, that would be horrible, right? That's the downside risk, four or five dollars. The upside potential. Hey, I believe in triple digit silver. Sometime in my life, hundred dollar silver. Okay, that's seventy five dollars to the upside, way up here to. $4, just a little bit down here. That's a bet I'm willing to take. Again, I'm not giving financial advice, but but I think it's a, uh, and it's real. <laughs> it's always there. It's always value. It always has been, and it will always continue to be. Uh, here we go. All of this relates to gold and silver because everything fake and synthetic, everything else, it really is fake and synthetic continues to get expanded and blown up and blown up while real money, real assets, finite assets like silver and gold remain constant. Okay. Um, let's just talk about what's going on quickly in the economy here as well. Uh, I heard it said last night, the cost of living since Joe Biden took office is up by at least 30% in the United States. Credit card debts, it hasn't changed, guys. Still at all-time highs. National debt all-time. This is not good. I don't care. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be the sky is falling guy, but the reality is, and when we look out at what is going on in the economy in the United States, in the G7 economies, it's all over Europe. I'm hearing, I heard somebody spew off a list of countries. Do you know that? Like Germany's in a recession. Japan's in a recession. I think they said Ireland, the UK. Everywhere we look, recession, recession, but not in America. No, we got Bidenomics and it's working. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder, does it make you a little suspicious? Don't forget. Okay. I'm not saying for sure that I think, oh, we are in a recession right now, but they don't, they, they announce recessions retroactively. They keep telling you everything's great. Everything's wonderful. The economy is great. Yeah. Hey, go vote. Blah, blah, blah. Right. And then. When they absolutely have to a year or six months later, they say, you know what, guys? I mean, have you noticed that with the government numbers that they put out? They always uh, modify them six months, three months down the road, a month down the road. Oh, well, we were wrong about that. And almost always when they modify these numbers, they're to the downside. They just did it last week with the employment numbers, right? Remember the January employment numbers were so unbelievable. And then when they announced the February numbers, they quietly said, oh, we, we made a little mistake on the January numbers. Uh, there were actually, well, I think it was 120,000 fewer jobs created. That's just the reality of what's going on. The United States, does it, does it feel like, me, like, like this to you? The last 50 years has been synthetic prosperity, not real prosperity, synthetic prosperity. And is that coming to an end? Look, again, we don't want to be negative. I, you know, I, I love this country, but I want to point out the fact, uh, the facts as we see it, because we want to prepare ourselves for what potentially could be coming down the road. Okay. Now, look, 10 years ago, I may have thought somewhat of a similar thing. So who knows how this all will play out. But man, my calculator works. I tested it. Does your calculator work? This is this is a, a, a very, what I would call, um, oh, tenuous uh, predicament that we found find ourselves in, okay? 
the BRICS countries are hastening this process for us. And the world central banks are giving us the biggest piece of evidence uh, as to what a smart thing could be to do with your money. They are buying gold. Don't you think that the central bankers know what they're doing? Take a step back and think about it. Okay. These world central banks, they're in control of the money. They know they're the insiders. They know what's going on more than anybody in the general population. Our fellow Americans, I'm not talking to you because you've chosen You've chosen to be awake. You've chosen, right, to, to look at the tough subjects, right, to look at everything. Listen to people like me. Listen to other people. Heck, listen to CNN. Listen to Fox. Listen to it all. And then put together your own thesis. But I'll tell you, when I when I go out on the street and I ask 10 random people, what do you think about the bifurcation going on in the world right, right now with the BRICS countries? And they look at me dumbfounded like, BRICS? You mean on your house run, you know, like they have no clue what's going on, right? Uh, the, the, the general population is asleep. You aren't, you aren't asleep. No. Gold is flashing a warning sign. I've heard several big analysts say this. Think about it. Gold and gold, the gold price going up and up and up. What's going, it's flashing a warning. The, the siren is going. Like, guys, something is going on. Something's not right in the world monetary system. All right. Uh, in the banking system, it's a big mess. <laughs> Today, today's the end of the BTFP, the bank term funding program, the bailout that they put in place one year ago to save all the banks from having to realize that they made some horrific investments with your money. Okay, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, you know, some people say, some people say that having money in the bank, and I have money in the bank, you likely have some money in the bank, but having all your money in the bank, people don't realize the risk they're taking, okay? There could, could, could be bail-ins, okay? There could be bank failures, right? There could be, uh, uh, I heard Peter Schiff say it last night, like if you got a lot of money in the bank, you either could lose some of that money or if you get the money out of the bank in some point, it could be vastly devalued. And people just don't realize that. It's called, I've heard it called two things, recency bias and normalcy bias, right? People that are in their 70s and 80s are like, your money's safe in the bank. They think that the safest place to have your money on the face of the earth, I bet 95% of people who are 70 years old and older, if you surveyed them, where's the safest place that you can put your money? In the bank, in the bank. Okay. Now you and I know, and we're not going to dive into it again, that the reality is something different. And the hardest thing, let's just say, uh, oh, what's that saying? It's, 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 it's much easier to brainwash somebody than to convince them that they've been brainwashed. Okay, so don't even go there. Don't even waste your time. If they're interested, they'll learn on their own. But that, I think it's just a fact. Like most people think, oh, my money's safe in the bank. My money's safe in the bank. Well, you know, you're, 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 there, there's so many variables that make that statement not true. I think, right? I think money. <laughs> what do you think, guys? What do you think? Put it in the chat. Bank or silver? Boy, I think I know the answer to that question. Look at that. It's it's so reflective. I can't even look at that. Oh, there it is. Now that American Silver Eagle 2023. Just look at that. Is that where you want your money? Wow, this new webcam, old Buttercup gave me is working good. That is pretty. God, I could look at that all day long. I don't want to bore you guys. Bank? Huh? Yeah, hey, that eagle came from my friend Jake from Jake's Custom Parts. Thank you, Jake. Hey, guys, before I forget, this is a huge community. And welcome, 500 of you right now here in the basement. We got 500 people hanging out talking about silver and gold. A big part of the community are the moderators. Uh, the moderators on this channel are great. So I always like to type 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 because those that moderate are great. Thank you guys for being here, okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you, okay? I wanna point something out that you may have forgotten about because we forget, we're all getting older, right? I know the average age on my channel, 
We're all in our 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. We got a couple of people in their 90s that are with us, okay? Uh, and younger people are joining as well, but most of us are in our 50s and 60s. Now, you may have forgot this. You may have forgot this. Is everything is off? Take a step back. What do you think? Everything's great. Just watch CNN. Watch the Today Show. Watch, watch mainstream media. Everything's great in the economy. Everything's wonderful, right? Remember this. This is so critical. This might shock you. <laughs> well, it might partially shock you. Hard to shock you anymore, right? But remember, last year, right now, three of the four biggest banks in the history of the United States, possibly the history of the world, maybe the history of the universe, time recorded, three of the four largest banks ever failed one year ago right now. <clears throat> the week prior to that, just like last week, Jerome Powell, I mean, let's get him out. We haven't had Jerome out for a while. Let's all say hi to our friend Jerome. I'll be right back. Don't leave. For those of you who are new, I'm not supposed to open this box, but I do anyway. There's our old friend, Jerome Powell. Okay, put him back in his box. He's got a recession on one side and inflation on the other. We'll leave that for another time. This is shocking. Okay, one year ago, right when all the biggest banks ever failed, the week prior, he was in Congress saying, everything looks great. Everything looks great. Everything is awesome. So don't believe these guys. <laughs> don't believe the hype. I'm sorry. And, and I wish we could. I wish that we could. Remember, Jeremy Powell, that guy right there that I just showed you, remember, three years ago, he said, inflation's not a problem. And then he said, well, inflation's transitory. And then he said, inflation's temporary. Guess what? We got a big long-term inflation plan uh, pro pro problem, problem right now, and it's not going anywhere. And it's going to be very supportive for the silver price and the gold price as we go into the next five to 10 years. You wait, okay? They don't have to lower rates because if inflation continues to go up and up and up, it's six or one half dozen the other, right? Right now, if they really wanted to kill inflation, they would have raised rates to 8 or 9%, but they can't because Jerome's in a box, guys. He can't raise rates to 8%, 9%. You know why? I'm going to show you one reason why. Hold on. This, makes, this should make perfect sense to you. This is why they can't raise rates to 8% or 9% like Volcker did back in the 80s because back then, in the 80s, the debt to GDP ratio was 25, 30%, 70s and 80s. Now it's 120. I don't know. It's way over 100. They can't. So they can't. They can't. And all the money printing, all that is all going to lead to more and more inflation. So they could even, they could even raise rates and silver and gold could continue up because the inflation is going to kill. Now, you know, We'll have to see how it all plays out. <laughs> there you are. Oh, man. We got a few more things to touch on. All right. It's going to be crazy interesting now over the next month or two to see the fallout from the bank term funding program. Um, I want to show you, well, let's just, the, the, the silver to gold ratio is still out of control. Um, we've got big, big issues in the silver market. I want to repeat this because this is music to your ears as a silver investor. Remember? Remember? I mean, what other investment can you get that is so beautiful? Oh, hold on. There it is. Look at that. Huh? What other investment can you get that is so beautiful? And, and when you look at that, American Silver Eagle, Remember this, the big picture about what's going on in the silver market. Mining supply is in a major downtrend. The amount of silver coming out of the ground. I just got them talking with Jorge Ganoza, the CEO of Fortuna Silver, which, hey, you know what? That reminds me. Let's say thank you to our mining company sponsors. What oh, wrong hand. There we go. Fortuna Silver. You can learn more about them at Fortuna silver.com. 
for almost 20 years, years now, Jorge Ganoza has been building that company methodically, okay, making good, solid, long-term decisions. And right now, potentially, they're in a spot where they could start to harvest big, big gains from those decisions as we're getting near record high prices in gold and silver. Also, let's say thank you to First Mining Gold. Keith Newmeyer started this company, what, seven, eight years ago? He's still the chairman. Uh, Dan Welton, CEO, two five million ounce projects in Canada and an interest in four other gold projects in Canada. Altogether, they have more than 12 million ounces of gold in the ground in Canada. You can learn more about them at firstmininggold.com. So the mining companies, mining's a tough business, guys. This is, look, look, when we're looking at this, beautiful, I'm, I'll show it to you one more time. Okay, that beautiful coin right there. Look at that thing. Okay, that came as the result of years, decades of work done, exploring out in the wilderness, drilling, okay, getting permits, building big mines, dealing with mine shutdowns, dealing with labor issues. So much energy goes into each one of those ounces of silver. It's absolutely crazy. And all the easy silver is gone. It's all gone. What's left now in the world is the hard to get to silver. We're seeing, and, and, and with the price where it is, this artificially manipulated. Do you believe that the COMEX price, right, is real? $24.50? How about change that first two to a four, $44.50? I showed you the wedgie earlier. We know that silver mining companies can barely make a profit at these prices. And as a result of that, there's no money going into exploration or development of new silver projects. That's a big deal to you as a silver investor. You know why? Because that means over the next 10 years, when the market does wake up and, and, and we do get $40 silver, $45, $50 silver, they can't just turn a switch and start and start producing more silver. It takes like 10 years at best from the time uh, that a discovery is made from exploration through the point where they can actually produce the silver. At the same time, demand is going through the roof. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. At the same time, demand through the roof. At the same time, okay, this massive de de deficit, de I can't have a hard time saying that word, deficit, <laughs> Deficit is growing and growing. I heard uh, Jeff Clark the other day say that, uh, well, here it is. I got it written down. Over the last four years, there's been 600 million more ounces of silver demanded than could be supplied by mining and recycling. Okay, where's that coming from? That's coming from above ground stockpiles. They're getting bled dry, right? The inventories at the COMEX and the LBMA. I don't know, guys. I'm excited. I'm sorry. I'm excited about silver and gold. I hope you're excited about silver and gold as well. Um, I appreciate everyone joining us today. Thank you for the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. All right, we put out a new piece of content every day, something to do with silver and gold. We had 500 people on here. You guys are awesome, okay? It's gonna be a wild, wild next five to 10 years. I'll be here with you through it all. Take care of yourself, okay?